Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm the manager of developer advocacy with Cisco Developer Relations. Hello, Snackers. Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. And welcome to episode 104 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and some cool stuff that we do here. And the cool stuff we're going to be talking about today are updates to the sandbox yeah. that everyone's in love with. Uh, with Allison Butler. Allison, wouldn't, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name is Allison Butler. I'm a technical leader on the DevNet Sandbox team. I work on a lot of backend things, um, so a lot of automation, APIs, that kind of stuff. Um, and we've got some really exciting things that are going to be coming in the next little bit. Um, Allison was with us a few episodes ago, um, showing us some automation that she works on for the Sandbox environment. Just so you guys know that we drink our own champagne here at, uh, at Cisco Snack Minute. Um, and so she's going to be talking about some of the things that um, you'll you see as changes for the Sandbox, uh, things that we're going to be updating, things that we're going to improve the, the user experience on. So, um, you know, what are some of the things, Allison, that you're excited about uh, that are coming in the Sandbox? So some of them aren't necessarily things that you, everybody will be able to see. Um, we're over the last year, 18 months or so, um, we've really been like taking a step back and like reevaluating a lot of our back end processes. Because um, one of the things like as we're planning, we want, you know, we want to automate our environment because we're a small team. There's not a lot of us. And we also have a data center to manage. Actually, we have two data centers to manage, and we are making sandboxes, and we have to keep everything up to date. Um, so we're looking, there's a couple key areas that we've been looking to automate in. So we're looking to help with the, the sandbox building process um, so that we can automate processes around that to reduce turnaround time. Um, right now, it takes anywhere from like four to six weeks once somebody like asks, like once we're approached to make a new sandbox or make an update for us to turn that around. But a lot of that is just like cloning VMs or <laughs> installing operating systems, which are things that we can do with Terraform in like two minutes. Um, so a lot of, so we're, we're looking at automating that. Um, we're hoping to improve user experience some by um, being able to do automated testing. That's something that I know <laughs> we, we implemented a feedback form. So if you're on the sandbox page, you have a feedback form now. Um, and a lot of the, the feedback that we're getting is that we need better error handling. Um, and so one of the areas we're trying to figure out how we can do testing better, so that's gonna be a lot of automation behind it. Um, but one of the things we realized is as we're looking to automate is our, our environment was not very automation friendly. Um, so we're, we're having to do a lot, pay off a lot of technical debt before <laughs> yeah. we can really get into like the fun stuff. We're having to go through and like slog through our backlog of all these projects that we've been meaning to do, but haven't been doing. I think the technical debt is is something that we all struggle with, yeah. and on top, yeah. on top of all of that, it's um, I'm not so sure. Just because they don't see it, it doesn't mean they're not going to feel. It. That's true. That's true. So it sounds like there's going to be a lot yeah. of improvement that's going to optimize the usage and maybe making it even more user friendly. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that we're we're hoping for, and just generally improving like the the communication experience um, and things that we can do for like performance as well. Right. Um, so got... stackers are going to be getting a more <laughs> kick-ass DevNet sandbox. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Um, it's interesting because we've, you know, this this sandbox environment is coming up on about ten years of existence yeah. yes. now, and it's really been the, one of the marquee pillars of what we're yeah. offering for automation engineers, for network engineers that are upskilling in automation, and even into um, your experiences in Cisco U. Right. And so this is something that it's exciting that the sandbox team yeah. is spending so much time to actually reframe and say, well, we're not just going to keep piling on top of what we've already done yeah. and deepening that technical debt, but actually thinking about what it means to refactor and uh, improve the experience for the end user, um, improve the experience for you guys, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and sure. really make it something that uh, we can push forward into the future with. Yeah. I mean, you you would not believe how many things that we found that are literally from like 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, I went through, I did an audit of all of our like backend gold images for sandboxes, and I don't think we'd ever deleted one. Oh. I found <laughs> IOX 1.2. I think we're on 15 or yeah, 16 at this point. Yeah, we're on like 15 or 16. I went through and I deleted probably 200, 250 VMs. And I have a few more that like are, are were like harder to tell if they were being used or not. 
Um, I, I, had, I like came up with an Ansible script to like go through and mark everything that we weren't using. And it turned out it was hundreds and hundreds of VMs. We have um, like 300 VMs, or we had 300 VMs called DevBox. Um, uh, 300 yeah, individual know. VMs called DevBox. Um, so some of the things we're, we're looking at trying to consolidate those down, like how can we do more configuration on the fly um, rather than having to like customize an image for each individual use case, especially for things like DevBox, um, CML that we're seeing in more and more topologies, um, those kinds of things. So how can we make things more modular and how can we reuse components where we can? Um, because right now we basically do everything as a special snowflake every single time. And it really increases our like build time. And then also makes it so much harder to maintain when you have like DevBox V1, DevBox V2, DevBox V3, DevBox V4 final. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is what we talked about though. Like yeah. we've been we've been kind of preaching this for a long time now where we're talking about a single source of truth where you can automate, you can go out, you can grab that and make snapshots of it and deploy it. So you're not having acquiring that type of yeah. thing. So yeah. I mean, honestly, like seeing the Seeing how the sandbox is one of my favorite resources out there in general, and you guys are like already thinking ahead yeah. on how you can improve that when it's already great. Like there's honestly, there's if I if I, you if I wasn't talking to you, I wouldn't realize <laughs> I needed to change anything to it. Can you tell us a little bit what is your favorite sandbox, whether it's existing or something that you're gonna be working on in the future? Yeah, I mean, so I know we have a lot of like super popular ones. I know like a lot of our like collabs and CMLs are people will use those all the time. Um, but I'm actually excited. So one of the, one of our goals for the next probably year, year and a half um, is to be able to have Kubernetes clusters as part of sandboxes. Right. That is like something that I am really excited for. I'm really gunning for this. Um, so I don't think my favorite sandbox exists yet. My favorite <laughs> sandbox is going to be the first one that I get to do where everything is containerized and there's no VMs. So it's, it's I'm like, so excited like for that. The, the magic lantern and the first thing you ask for is more wishes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that, that, uh, that's exciting to think I'm about. I'm so excited. And well, and then it really then offers the opportunity. We talk about infrastructure as code as a, you know, as a, as an idea. We offer a way to talk about it. You even demoed that for us in yes. Terraform. But really what Sandbox is really trying to do is to get everything to infrastructure as code. Yes. And organizations, when they're dealing with their infrastructure, they have very specific things that they have to deploy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sandbox has to deploy everything. Yes, we do. We do. Um, and like some things are going more virtualized, which makes our lives a little bit easier. I think we have maybe a virtualized DNAC. Mm -hmm. coming out um, or that we're, like that. we're investigating. Get a reservation for DNA that's not like two months. It's, yeah, yeah. Instantaneous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about that. But... I don't know about instantaneous. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to be going a lot more, like having a lot more Terraform on our back end so that we're not having to like spin up VMs every single time from scratch. Um, and doing a lot more like configuration on the fly. Um, when and where we can. Could it be um, on-demand configurations for the users themselves, potentially? Um, that is something that we've talked about. I think that's probably a longer, like a much longer term okay. stretch goal. Um, we've absolutely had people ask for that. Like, hey, I want to be able to load up a very specific scenario. Um, and I want to like, I want like this one sandbox to come up with like three different scenarios. Yeah. Um, that is something that we've talked about. I think that's probably much further out. We still have a lot of technical debt that we have to slog through. And I'm sure that there are some platforms that lend themselves. To yeah, that situation. yeah. I think some of the, some of the IoT ones. I think that they've definitely talked about that with us before. Okay, for sure. Um, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so everyone, just so you know, this is all, you know, <laughs> this is all coming soon. Yeah. Um, we're we're in the middle of working on it. Allison and team are, are really working hard on, on making that experience yeah. uh, better, faster, awesomer. Um, and awesome. the cool thing is, <laughs> I made up a word. <laughs> and the cool thing is, is that the more you talk about these things, I'm thinking, oh, Allison could come on and talk about how they implemented the new CMS. I'm sandbox. so excited. Allison yeah. Could come on and talk yeah. about how they implemented the yeah. new IOX sandbox. And so that's those will be fun things because then we can actually show people very directly. The lessons you've learned over, yeah, you know, you yeah. guys have learned over 10 years. We have a whole lot of them. <laughs> how you, I mean, because those are really 
viable problems yeah. that organizations run into. Well, that's, that's where, like, one of the reasons why we've kind of, well, in addition to just running into vCenter upgrade problems, Python and upgrade problems, we were running Python too, um, as a whole. December of last year. Yeah, <laughs> we I wrote were some Python of those scripts. <laughs> um, we're on Python three now. We're, we're on Python three. Right. Um, <laughs> but some of some of the one of the reasons why we're kind of like going into this kind of slow is because we want to get it right this time. Yeah. Like we, there's so many things that like we go. That's in. not to say you guys weren't getting it right this whole time. Right? No, it's we definitely work, were getting work, it right. But if you so. if you go back and look in the back end, you're like, why is this like this? Why did we name it like that? Why did we put it here? Again, and there's there's no from, reason. From for a it. snapper's perspective, they, they still <laughs> to use it. And yes, it's yes. free. It's an awesome resource if you're getting started with something as a developer. But it's and not. you get hands on like experience with real Cisco hardware. So but it's gonna be better. It's gonna be better architected. Um, things are gonna work better. We're going to be able to do like error handling. Like if you're if something in a sandbox comes up and breaks, we can just fix it. Nice. <laughs> Rather than having it be like, oh, oops, throw the whole thing away. <laughs> um, so that's one of the things that we're really, really hoping to be able to do, like a better user experience, right, for end users who right. don't have to like make a reservation and be like, oh, I guess something broke. I guess I'll have to do it again now. Um, well, unfortunately, Allison, I hate to cut you off here, but that is, we're running out of time. All right. <laughs> but it's really cool to have these like real live conversations yeah. about real live environments to understand the concerns and, and engineering challenges that, that, you know, even our sandbox team is running oh, into. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I can't wait to have you on again and, and really yeah, dig into sure. the, to the definitive items. Now, you have been on before, so we won't ask you the superhero question, but we will say, uh, Thank you for joining us again. Wow. And, uh, snackers, thanks for thanks for another episode of Snack Minute, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Snackers. Awesome. Thank you.